Now I, like a lot of other hot hatchback enthusiasts, really adore the Golf GTI, as you can probably tell by my very deliberately chosen shirt today. But the Mark 8 car left me feeling a little cold, a bit distant. It's not what it once was. The Club Sport has been introduced to try and change our minds. Now the Club Sport isn't some limited run GTI like it has been in the past. It's now a permanent fixture in the range. So I guess the big question is, what's the differences between the standard Mark 8 GTI and this car? Well, let's begin with up front because under the bonnet, the two litre four cylinder engine now produces 296 brake horsepower. Torque has also been up by 30 newton meters to 400 newton meters total. It's limited slip differential has been tweaked. There's now more negative camber for the front tires. The car overall sits 10 millimetres lower. The steering has also been tweaked. And overall, the suspension and dampers have been totally reworked for a more aggressive, more engaging setup than the standard GTI. Now, visually speaking, there's not an awful lot to pick this GTI out from the standard car, but if you're buying a GTI, you probably value its subtlety. There's not even a club sport badge to be found anywhere on the exterior. What you do get is a set of these little decals down the side. And also you might notice this more prominent rear spoiler. Oh, and this particular car is wearing optional 19 inch alloy wheels. And I think overall it looks pretty sharp. It's just a notch or two sportier for those in the know about GTIs, but overall it retains that really grown up feel that GTIs have always had. And there's similar enhancements inside too. It's very techified, modern, glossy, premium. That's the initial impact that you get from this. A lot of the material choices are quite interesting and reflective. Though if you do fish around, you will find some scratchier, cheaper plastics about the place that do sort of let down the premium veneer of the car ever so slightly. But by and large, it's a great place to sit. It feels mature and modern. Though there is just enough sporting criteria in here to separate it from other golfs in the range. You've got things like this honeycomb trim here on the dashboard and these really nice sport seats. Now they are well bolstered and plenty supportive, but they're not too aggressive. They're a comfortable place to sit for long periods over lengthy stints on the motorway. In terms of practicality, the rear bench seats three with good head and leg room, though the middle passenger does have to deal with that transmission hump. And a nice wide opening boot opens up to 374 litres of space. One of the big focal points of the interior is this 10 inch infotainment display, and it's a really good size and it's graphically really impressive. However, you are probably bored of anyone talking about Volkswagen Group products and this touchscreen in that it's not the easiest thing to use. The touch sensitive buttons are a bit of a faff to use whilst driving and the whole user interface is just full of menus and it's difficult to get to places. It's just not the most ergonomic. Far clearer is the digital instrument display that you find here for the driver. That's clean, crisp and anyone who appreciates in-car tech will like this. Now, while those exterior changes are pretty subtle, I'm pleased to report that the tweaks under the skin have made quite a difference. All of a sudden, the GTI's slightly cold, slightly detached nature evaporates into something that's much more plugged in, feels much more focused, much more confident about the way that it bowls itself down the road. There's so much stability, there's so much grip, and that's been a hallmark of GTI's forever. But what we have in the new Mark 8 is a brilliantly agile chassis to go with it. Start throwing the car into corners and it feels really hunkered down to the road. And the steering is much more responsive than before. I still think it's a little bit of a weak link in the chain in that there's not very much in the way of feedback or, you know, that lack of interaction, that detachment that's here is maybe what makes it not the most thrilling hot hatch in the class. But this is a marked improvement on the standard GTI, I have to say. Start throwing the car around and you'll find it's a really nose positive hot hatchback. That diff working really hard to scrabble the nose into the apex of a bend. And you can feel beneath you the chassis wanting to pivot and pitch and it's just much more agile and free than Golf GTIs before. And that's been the biggest asset of the Mark 8 Golf GTI in general. But this club sport does it with just much more verve, much more zest than what the standard car does. The brakes have also been enhanced on this Club Sport model, now up to 357 millimetres for the discs up at the front. 
and also the pedal, as well as having more physical bite, it has better feel to it, making it easier to modulate. And that just boosts that driver interaction with this hot hatch. It genuinely feels faster as well, and that's not largely due to that 54 brake horsepower bump. It's more to do with the 400 newton meters of torque on offer and the shorter ratios from this automatic gearbox. It just clips on at quite a rate. It effortlessly builds speed, and the torque, the torque is what you feel. That's that mechanical muscle that surges you on. And yeah, it's great. It's a really strong engine. The DSG gearbox is really good. It's very slick, very smooth whenever you're just pottering about, but also it knows what it's doing whenever you're getting a bit of a charge on. However, I will say, whenever you clack at it through these wheel-mounted paddles, very responsive on a down change, can be a little hesitant on an upshift though. The great thing about front-wheel drive hot hatchbacks versus all-wheel drive hot hatchbacks is that you sort of have to manage the car a bit more. You haven't got a total abundance of grip, although there is plenty of it here. You have to manage what the front wheels are doing. They're dealing with the power and the steering and the braking. And that just requires a bit more skill from the driver. Now this particular GTI has been optioned with DCC or dynamic chassis control. And it's a bit of a must in a Golf GTI because the ride in general on the passive suspension I find to be a bit hard. This car, as I've said, is on the optional larger 19 inch alloy wheels, which typically would have a detrimental effect on ride. But because of DCC, and the infinite number of suspension settings that I have here, I can soften things off so much that actually it's a night and day difference between having the system and not. Another benefit of DCC comes in the form of selectable drive modes. Now the GTI Club Sport has these anyway, but obviously we can now enhance the overall experience with changing the suspension setup on the go. You have your fairly typical array of eco, comfort and sport, which will do things like reduce throttle responsiveness to improve fuel economy or slacken the suspension off to make it more comfortable in general, make the steering lighter. When you go into sport, things firm up quite considerably and the steering gains a nice amount of weight which boosts its accuracy, which is really good. However, the Club Sport has a bonus setting within sport labelled special with a picture of the Nürburgring and this is actually a setup used to hit the Nürburgring record time which was some 13 seconds faster than the standard Golf GTI. And as you'd expect, this is one of the car's angriest modes. Everything's hyper alert, hyper sensitive, maximum power, maximum pace. Except for the suspension, which has actually been slackened off a little bit. A bit counterintuitive for a sports mode, don't you think? But when you think about it, the Nürburgring is full of undulations and bumps and imperfections. The last thing you want is a really stiff setup that upsets the car at the penultimate moment into a corner. So it relaxes things down there a little bit. And the end result is something that's just actually perfect for UK roads because our road surface is exactly like the Nürburgring's, not perfect. You get all of the pace, but none of the real nasty shuddery downsides that sports modes typically give you. Factor in those crackles and pops from the exhaust on the overrun and you find that this is a car with much more character than the standard GTI and it's a car that wills you on to play considerably more than the standard GTI. I've got a bit of a theory that because the Club Sport is a model of permanence now in the GTI range, that maybe the original car was watered down a little bit to make space for this and this is what the GTI should have always been. You'll pay around about a £3,000 premium for the Club Sport, but it is worth every single penny. But then this GTI plays its ace card, in that it can go about its business just like any other Volkswagen Golf, especially if you tick the £785 box for DCC, which I strongly suggest you do, because you can back that suspension right off, and it's a lovely, comfortable way of spending a lot of time behind the wheel. As I've said with every Volkswagen Golf that I've reviewed of late, the Golf itself has gone upmarket and the price has gone up with it. And you do get more premium features, more standard equipment. That said, this Club Sport model does go a long way to restoring my faith again in the Golf GTI.